Captain Mark Kelly says he does not blame Jared Loeffner's parents for the Tucson tragedy that left six dead and 14 wounded, including his wife, Gabby Giffords. He considers himself a forgiving person and would even be willing to meet with Loeffner's parents. I'm sure they love their son, he told ABC News, and they must be as distraught over this as all of us are. Congresswoman Carolyn McCarthy's spouse was also shot by a deranged gunman in 1993. McCarthy's husband and five others did not survive that shooting. McCarthy has been battling for stricter gun control laws ever since, and today she formally introduced a bill in the House that would permanently ban ammunition clips with a capacity higher than 10 rounds. They are not needed for the average citizen. These are basically, in addition to a gun, and I'm saying to a gun, because we are not taking away the right of anyone owning a gun. That's already been settled by the Supreme Court. But it doesn't mean that we can't do something towards gun safety to save lives. Both Loeffner and the gunman who killed McCarthy's husband were tackled and subdued while changing their high capacity ammunition clips. If they had had standard capacity clips, their killing sprees would have been stopped sooner and their body counts would be lower. McCarthy's bill currently has 42 co-sponsors in the House. Not one is a Republican. Joining me now, Republican Congressman from Arizona, Trent Franks. Thank you very much for joining me tonight, Congressman Franks. Lawrence, thanks for having me on. Congressman, don't you wish Jared Loeffner had a smaller capacity ammunition clip when he went to Gabby Gifford's event in Tucson? Lawrence, I wish that Jared Loeffner had uh, the capacity to have a, a moral impulse toward his fellow human beings and a commitment to, to protect them as uh, children of God. That's the real issue here. You know, from the very first hours of this tragedy, Lawrence, uh, I have listened to the left try to politicize this while people were making funeral arrangements for lost loved ones. And uh, I, uh, I have to tell you, I think that when the left says, well, it's the rhetoric, or well, it's the, it's the Tea Party, or well, it's Sarah Palin, um, you know, I guess, first of all, I'd like to say if, if every person on the earth had the respect for innocent human life that Sarah Palin does, we wouldn't have violence anywhere on any corner of the globe. And I just am frustrated that, uh, that in this tragedy that people have tried to politicize this and have tried to make everything but a crazed killer the problem. The real problem here is that whatever statement this lunatic was trying to make, uh, he was willing to kill innocent children of God to do it. He had no respect for innocent human life, and that is the great challenge of society. If we can't uh, uh, put that forward as the central focus here, then I think we, we miss the boat on all counts. Carson Franks, I'll try again. Do you wish that his gun held 10 bullets instead of 31 bullets? I wish he had not had a gun at all. He shouldn't have had a gun at all. He was, I think, mentally ill, and we have laws against that in many places. And I think to focus on the clip is like saying that, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll combat to drunk driving by limiting the size of, of fuel tanks. Uh, the, the bottom line is that the real focus here should be on the killer and not the gun. The gun was essentially the same type of gun that police officers use uh, in, across Europe and in many places here. And Perhaps, uh, you know, you, you mentioned a quote that I uh, made earlier. You didn't mention the, con uh, the, the context of the quote. Uh, if, if perhaps a police officer or someone there was responsible, maybe, maybe very few people would have had to die. Maybe, maybe uh, the, the, the gunman would have been stopped before he started. We don't know, but I do know this. It wasn't the gun that was the problem. It wasn't Sarah Palin that was the problem. It wasn't the rhetoric that was the problem. It wasn't the Tea Party that was the problem. It was a crazed lunatic without regard for innocent human life. That was the problem. Well, you did entertain the hypothetical that you wished there was someone else there with a gun who could have... Uh... You, you left out the, la you left out the second part of the quote. I was responding to when people were saying that it was the gun, it was the gun, it was the gun. And I said, well, perhaps uh, if, if, uh, if someone there additional gun had been there in responsible hands, 
uh, I said in responsible hands. We have the, if, you know, the, the, the truth is uh, very few people would advocate taking guns out of the hands of police officers. They think the police officers should have guns to be able to stand against those who have no regard for innocent human life, and I agree with that. But the real argument there is then that it is not the gun, it's whose hands it's in that's the issue. And my quote was, in responsible hands. And again, it was in response to an effort by the left to say that the gun was the problem. That wasn't my, the focus of my, fo uh, my comments here at, uh, in, in the media here at all. I've been trying to essentially make the case, and again tonight I make the case, that the real challenge in our society is to see each other as children of God, as fellow human beings. And if we did that, uh, the rhetoric would be transformed, uh, the debate itself would have a whole new emphasis, and maybe we could see this last best hope of mankind extended for our, our future generations a little longer. Okay, your, your actual quote was, I wish there had been one more gun there that day in the hands of a responsible person. Now, yeah, a responsible in, in response, person, in response okay, to the people who were saying that the gun was the person, problem. A responsible person, Congressman, would have been, say, a police officer. Let's say a very well-trained in firearms New York City police officer. You are aware, aren't you, sir, that most of the bullets fired by American police officers miss their target. The overwhelming majority of bullets fired by American police officers always miss their target. So what the, inter the hypothetical you're entertaining is an extremely reckless one in which bullets would be fired, very likely miss their target according to law enforcement records on how handguns are used there. I'm asking you to entertain another hypothetical and that hypothetical is imagine this event occurred in 2003 when Jared Loeffner, by federal law, enacted by the Democrats 10 years earlier, would not have been allowed to get his hands on a magazine that held 30 bullets. He only would have been able to fire 10, then he would have had to reload, and those heroes who stopped him when he tried to reload would have stopped him after firing 10, and more citizens of Arizona would be alive today in your state if that magazine held only 10 bullets. I'll ask you again, do you wish Jared Loeffner's magazine only held 10 bullets instead of the 31 that he fired? And I will tell you again, sir, that I wish he had not had a gun at all. And so you're not your premise, going to answer your premise, that question about the magazine. Premise, if you'll, if you'll answer me the question, answer the question you, about you, the I'll, magazine. I will on one basis. On one basis. Will you answer the question? You said that the police officers miss all the time. Will you say that you're glad that there were no police officers there that day? No, I will not say that. But all I'm, right, I'm then willing I will to entertain say that, I will your not hypothetical. Say, I will not your say hypothetical that I, might have been helpful, might not have been helpful. But now consider my hypothetical. It's 2000. Three. He can only fire 10 bullets. Arizona would have been better off, right? Your constituents in Arizona would have been better off if Jared Loeffner, by law, could only fire 10 bullets. See, I think that that presupposes that he couldn't have changed clips or all kinds he of things. He couldn't change clips because the colonel was there to stop him, because those heroes in that parking lot were there to stop him. We saw him try to change clips, and he couldn't do it. That's what stopped him. Well, I give every credit to those who stopped him, but I will say to you again that to blame the gun rather than the individual is why we continue We're, to have these kinds the of problems. I blame the individual for the first 10 bullets. I blame the law for the next 21 bullets that he fired. Well, you know, you're, you're suggesting that that there wouldn't be other ways that he could have done it. What if he'd brought a bomb? We There's know all what kinds happened. We know what stopped him. When he had to reload, it was over. We know the facts, Congressman. We know exactly how it ended. Don't pretend that you don't know how it ended and who ended it. He couldn't reload, and the heroes there on the scene stopped him. He, he shot, according to what you're saying, he shot 31 times. And there was no one there to stop him that could have. And that was the basis of my comment. The fact is that we need to try our best to see each other as children of God and to point uh, the, the finger at the lack of respect for innocent human life, which is essentially the biggest challenge in all of society. And we need to make sure that crazed lunatics don't get weapons. And we need to make sure that if they do, that we can stop them if necessary. There was a lack of respect for human life 
in the federal government in 2004 when the ban on those magazines so let's just, was let's allowed just take, to expire. Let's just, let's just take... Trent uh, Franks, we've got to cut it there. We're over Yeah, time. let's take the guns away from everyone, all police officers, everyone. That'll solve the problem, right? Don't be silly. Congressman Trent Franks, Republican of Arizona, thank you very much for joining us tonight.